Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In the last seven presentations, we've gone through comparative statics, or in other words, the economic analysis of how our predictions about price and quantity change in a market when something else changes. We've looked at a huge range of something else's that have changed, from Oprah Winfrey through to changes in technology through to increases in national income. But there's one key question. Does this stuff really work in the real world? Well, the answer, unsurprisingly, is yes. There's been a huge number of studies looking at comparative static predictions and comparing them with actual market outcomes. And comparative statics is an amazingly useful tool to predict real world changes. I'm just going to run through one example here, but I'm going to deliberately pick the one that students believe the least. We've had changes that lead to increases in predicted quantity and decreases in predicted quantity. They seem reasonable. We've had changes that lead to increases in the predicted price and decreases in the predicted price. And it's that latter one that seems to upset students the most. Students are happy to say, hey, we see prices increase, but do we really see prices decrease in the real world? The example that I'm going to use comes from the United States. In October 2011, the law in the US changed relating to debit cards. It meant that there was a reduction in the cost of accepting debit cards for every retailer in the country. From the perspective of comparative statics, that means that there was a rightward shift in the supply curve. What happened? Well, let's start off with our theory, then I'll bring it back to the evidence. We start, as usual, with our initial equilibrium, S0, D0, and our initial price P0, and quantity Q0. The reduction in the cost of accepting debit cards means that there was a rightward shift in the supply curve from S0 to S1. And our prediction is that that would lead to an increase in the quantity of goods traded and a decrease in the price that consumers pay. Did consumers really receive a price reduction? Well, let me read you from a story that was presented in the US a year after the change. So let's look at what the evidence showed. Well firstly there is evidence that the reduction in prices to consumers came to as much as 18 million dollars a day over the United States. How did the prices come down? Well let me quote Home Depot which is a major uh, hardware supplier in the States announced that the savings would be put into a pool of reduced operating costs and would then be passed on through reduced prices on more than 3,000 items. IKEA in the United States started offering vouchers to customers who pay by debit card so that they can save money on the next purchase. Uh, some other stores, which previously gave discounts for cash, started offering the same discounts for debit cards as well as for cash. So there were a variety of ways that the price reduction was passed through to customers. Now, this is only one example, but if you really want to check the comparative statics works, read the newspapers and start using some comparative statics to make your own predictions about what will happen when other things change, whether it's national income, whether it's government policy, or whether it's simply a story in the media. Make your predictions and then check later on, a few months later, to see if your predictions have come right or not. Most of the time you will find that comparative statics is an amazingly powerful tool to make economic predictions and that even after just half a semester of first year undergraduate microeconomics, you will be able to make predictions about markets that make a lot of supposed experts look pretty foolish. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.